promising them to stop Payment is only the rock So I take water and soda They hit them with lyrics And mix them up all in the pot While in the jungle They won't be tamed Keep them alive but without a brain They want me broke with a lot of pain Smiling but he in a lot of pain Till he tap out like a lot of names You gotta give me what's old Taking control No, this is not a game, no It's time for another edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. I'm your host, Tony Simeone, joined as always by the head coach, Mike Bray. Coach, we're sitting here after another big win against North Carolina. It's four in a row now for you guys. What's been working so well for you? You know, I just think our leadership and our veteran guys have grabbed a hold of this group and have uh, made plays down the stretch, especially in our two league games against Pittsburgh and against North Carolina to scratch out a win. I'm very proud of our older guys. This really feels like the team we expected to see early in the season. In the last month, just what has stuck out as maybe a big key for you guys that's allowed you to go on this run? Well, I think getting Prentice Hub back in the right frame of mind, he had a really rough start. He is such a key for us as far as quarterbacking us and, and leading us. Of course, Dane Goodwin's been there from day one. And I feel like we have a night a Nate Lashevsky light bulb kind of starting to go on. Cormac Ryan has been our best defender. Trey Wirtz coming off, handling the ball, finding people. Blake Wesley being Blake Wesley. You know, we have seven guys that know who they are. They've played together a lot now. And I think they understand how to play off of each other better on both ends of the floor. Well, when we come back, we'll get a chance to break down the last month of Notre Dame men's basketball on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball, presented by TireAct.com. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. It's time now to break down the last month of hoops for you guys. It's been four in a row. Before that, though, after the last time we talked against Kentucky, you went on the road, I guess, in a neutral site game <laughs> against Indiana. Crossroads Classic. That was a game I thought you guys had a really good start to the first half, then you got into some foul trouble. What'd you take away from that game, a tough loss in that environment? Well, you know, it definitely was a road game atmosphere, Tony, even though they call it a neutral site. And it was the last game of the crossroads and and playing a, an Indiana team that can really defend you. They guarded the heck out of us, you know, the last 10 minutes uh, of the second half. But I was really proud of our group. We came back and had three chances to take the lead and couldn't make any shots to get the lead. And you got to at least feel getting the lead. I thought the Indiana did a great job with their frontline guys kind of beating us up inside. And um, we just couldn't get over the hump in that atmosphere. Let's start, though, with Western Michigan. You guys came home. It was a real chance, I think, for you guys to get right. You mentioned against Indiana, didn't knock down the threes. You started to knock down a lot of threes against Western Michigan with 14. You know, I, I've been having to answer why my guys can't shoot for a, for a month. And I'm saying, you know, I'm watching this guy, this group in practice, and I really think we got some good shooters. And it was almost like we, we, we opened up the floodgates and shot the heck out of against Western Michigan. And ever since then, we've been shooting the ball well. But I thought we, you know, what we've done offensively with some more structure, I think our good shooters are knowing more where they're getting the ball and they're getting the ball with calmer feet. And that's why I think our percentages are up since Western Michigan. Let's talk about one of those guys that got going. Cormac Ryan, I think's played great defense all year, but he broke out for 13 points in the second half against Western Michigan. When he's shooting it well, what kind of element does that add to your team? Yeah, and he is a great shooter and you, you make a great point. He is an amazing defender. And I think sometimes he exhausts his legs because he works so hard defensively. He takes charges he leads us in charges taken and so when he gets it back sometimes he's a little winded but I think he's getting better game shape now and we want him to rise up when he's got a clean look and stick it and he felt good the other night let's talk about maybe your most consistent player Dane Goodwin who's been involved in every game double figures in every game but in that Corpus Christi game he played 39 minutes gave you 21 points on 7 of 14 shooting just overall what has he meant to this program this year specifically well you mentioned 39 minutes you can see it's hard for me to take him out of the game you know, he has been rock solid from day one. Um, he's been a leader this year. He's been more vocal than ever before. And the thing that we're starting to see, we know he can score and we know he can rebound and we know he's fearless. Now he's starting to pass the ball and really look like a guard. I think he's had seven assists in the pit, between the pit and North Carolina, seven or eight assists. So he's starting to join the club of our good passers and finding people. Coach, appreciate it. When we come back, we'll break down the two ACC victories against Pitt and North Carolina after this on Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireRack.com.
Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. Now time to look at the last two ACC victories for you guys. Coach, you were going on the road to Pittsburgh. You were coming off your last road game in league against Boston College where you guys just didn't look like yourselves. I felt there was an added emphasis to get this one on the road against Pitt. Going into the game, what was the mindset? What was the message to the team for this game? Well, you're right, Tony. Extremely important game after not playing well at all at Boston College, getting our backsides handed to us. And you want to get to one and one in that league. You start to lose and not get a league win, man. It's hard to climb out of that hole. Pittsburgh, a physical group that's really going to guard you and kind of drive at your throat and try and beat you up. And I, to me, it was like one of those old Big East games, the physicality and the pain and the driving and the banging. And we hung in there, even though it was ugly and we could never really get our offense going till about the last six minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was a really interesting one. Tied at halftime, and then your team got off to just a slow start in the second half. I think you guys were three for 15 from the floor as you came into the second to last media timeout. You were down eight, eight minutes to play. I just wanna know what kind of conversation goes on in the huddle there, because your team went on a great run out of that media timeout. One of the things that I've liked about this group, and I think it's really started with the week of practice before the Kentucky game. You know, uh, and and uh, again, the Boston College game, I think, was a great wake-up call for all of us, especially our leadership. I think they've taken better ownership of themselves, this group. And I think when you get to that as the leader and your team has ownership of itself, you always have a chance. And I think since then, we've been really good. And in that huddle, it was them talking more than me talking and figuring out here's what we're gonna do and here's how we're gonna do it. And, and with a confident tone. And my thing with them was, let's just keep game pressure on them. We've been in more close games. We've been able to figure out how to finish. And, you know, we get on a run offensively, we're getting some looks. Uh, and, you know, thrilled for Prentice Hub, who deserves it. I mean, he's a winner. He had a really rough start to his senior year, but, you know, when he when he shoots the fadeaway with five seconds, I'm thinking if anybody deserves one to go in, it was him. And so to escape with a road win, no matter how you get it, we'll take it. But I thought we showed some mental toughness. You got the big road win. I'm just curious, what's it like in the locker room uh, after you get a win like that on the road in conference play? When you have a thrilling end game situation on the road, there's not a better locker room to be in. And and I, I mean, it's energizing to go in there and and feel it and think about it and be part of it. And our guys were celebrating as they should. And uh, my, th my theme was just how fearless you know, we've been. And we showed some of that same stuff against North Carolina. You didn't get a chance to play the Duke game. We'll see if it gets back on the schedule. So you had a week off, but you got another blue blood coming to town, North Carolina in town, going into the game against the Tar Heels. What goes through your head as a coach? What was the message during the week to get them ready for a really tough opponent? Well, it's disappointing that you have to go another eight days. You know, I, I like the rhythm we were in playing two games a week and getting into it. And, and that's a long week of practice, especially with an older team that's practiced a lot, you know, through their career and already this year. But I thought we, we knew we had a great opportunity at home and we were really ready to play. One of the guys that made some of those big time plays was a guy that got going early, Nate Leshesky. We've talked about him through the year. Does a great job of letting the game come to himself. He was six of seven from three. Really his best offensive performance of the year in this one. What'd you like from Nate? Well, I think, again, like you said, he, he's not a guy that's just going to go hunt his stuff and, and, and he gets it in the midst of our offense. I think he knows he plays with great passers and unselfish guys. And I think he's starting to find in the midst of what we're doing offensively, where to sneak around and get some looks. Uh, and he did, and now he rose up confidently too. And, and I've always been on him. You can take a bad shot every now and then. I want you to rise up, you're, you're 6'11", you can shoot over the top of people. But I thought the Carolina game was a great example of really unselfish passers finding a weapon and man did he rise up confidently you mentioned the way your team closed this game i'm just thinking back now you know blake wesley's hit a game winner against kentucky prentice hub hit one against pitt it was lasheski late also dane goodwin was stepping up with some big buckets i mean i look down the roster it can be any guy any night to close out the game for you how much of a weapon is that for this team well i'm certainly convincing of them of that after this week you know i, I i'm thinking fellows we have been in game situations more than other teams and I think we're addicted to them, all right? I know we give our fans a heart attack, and I'm losing more hair, but 
There's something, the thrill of it. We're kind of, we're kind of digging the thrill of game situations. And I'm going to keep convincing them that's our advantage when it gets to that. Coach, appreciate it. When we come back, we'll go inside the play with this week's edition of Irish Intel on Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireAct.com. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireRack.com. It's now time for Irish Intel, where we go inside the play. Coach, you had some great possessions late in the crunch time against Pitt. 90 seconds left. You're tied at 63. Some great ball movement to create this three from Cormac Ryan. Well, I know Prentice Hub's back when he does this in a ball screen. This is the Prentice Hub feeling the game uh, where he splits a ball screen. Big time play there, extra pass by Dane, and Cormac Ryan rising up, and you had said he had not made any, but sticking it with big time confidence. But we're playing basketball here, and we're spreading the floor. Paul's our ball screener. Prentice is reading it. You've got Prentice Hub as a quarterback. He's stirring the drink right now, and we just get great movement and a heck of a find by Prentice to make that find. Dane with a touch pass. I talked about how Dane, court vision, and this is a tough one. They're closing out on him, but it's low clock. And my man is rising up and sticking it. You know, he did make six or seven at Pittsburgh last year. I reminded him of that at shoot around. Just playing basketball confidently out of our principles. The one thing I want to ask here, you got a great look at it. How about the feed from Dane? He's jumping away. He knows, you know, this is a, a look where maybe he's going to have a chance to take a shot, but he just knows this pass is going to take me out of my rhythm. From the position he's in to fire that ball right into Cormac's pocket, how good is this pass? And, and first of all, it's a great catch. Like, that's a tough catch right there. You know, that's a, that's a wide receiver in the end zone, right? Catch in one motion, fire. You know, it's something we do in our shooting drills. We talk about being on those X's we have on the court in the corner. Prentice knew where he was. But in one motion to do that, and then for, you know, Cormac to know, I've got to rise up and stick it. He keeps the follow through out. Got to love it. He keeps the follow through out. But it's just, it's a fearless way of finishing a game. And I really like to see, it's neat to see these traits developing here in this group. All right, Coach, this is late in the game against North Carolina. Two minutes left. You're actually pretty deep in the shot clock here. Just nine seconds left. Dane Goodwin's going to create a three for Nate Leshesky to give you that two-possession lead. Talk me through this play. Well, again, it's back to Dane being a guard and being a better passer, I think, in the last couple weeks and making plays off the dribble. You know, we, we get into some motion here. Dane probes. They overhelp, and we get a great look. Great play by Dane, but I really, I really like what Nate's doing, how he's rising up, wanting to take big shots. Uh, but uh, just good basketball. Fade screen here, yeah. right? Manic, Carolina's, uh, Nate's guy has to help a little bit. He's helping on the drive. We step back up again, and man, do we get a really good one here. And again, Dane probing and finding a guy that is really confident, and Nate Lashevsky's feeling good about who he is. Shoot it. Let me ask you one thing about that flare screen, because watching it a third time, I finally saw it. it really did seem like late in the clock, just that little flare from Cormac forced Manic to drop underneath to maybe help there, and it gave Nate the airspace. Is that a call late in game, or is that just these guys having great basketball IQ? That's a principle that on our t on our side, when we're in this, this fade stuff, especially when Nate's involved. Mm -hmm. When Nate's lower and involved, we like him fading, and stepping back. Mm -hmm. And so this is stuff we do in our shooting drills. This is stuff we do when we go five on zero motion to work on our, that is a kind of a principle. And in the midst of game pressure, they stay true to themselves. When we come back, we'll have this week's edition of Irishography on Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireAct.com. So Cormac, you guys have won four in a row, five of your last six. Seems like the team's really hitting its stride right now. From your perspective, what's working so well? Uh, I think we're just, you know, competing. I think we've uh, found a rhythm offensively. You know, I think the, the biggest thing for us is, you know, just hanging tough in uh, tight games. I think that's been, you know, one of the uh, one of the keys for us is, you know, when we end up in situations where it's a, a close game and there's game pressure, uh, you know, we just stay together and stay connected and find a way to win. And we've been in those situations, you know, pretty often. You know, in Kentucky game was obviously tight. You know, Corpus Christi was tight. Pitt was tight. Last night was tight, you know. So, um, 
just being able to kind of grit it out and find ways to make uh, winning plays down the stretch has been has been key for us. You've had, I think, a ton of big time defensive assignments. I think about the North Carolina game, you took two big charges. We're also defending Caleb Love down the stretch. Individually, you stand out as one of the best on ball defenders. Just how do you lock in so well defensively? What do you do to put yourself in the right mindset to perform on the defensive end every night? Uh, you know, I, I love the challenge. You know, I want to guard the best guy every time. You know, it, it gets me going. Um, you know, just staying in front of guys, putting a chest on somebody, taking a charge, you know, that fires me up. Trying to be a, a voice, you know, for our defense and, you know, just trying to continue to connect with our guys and, and get stops has is, is been, been fun for me and big for the team. You, know, you talked about late game execution. I want to ask you about a specific shot against Pittsburgh. To that point in the game, you think you were 0 for 5, and then you have the ball come to you from Dane with about 75 seconds left in the tie game, rose up and knocked down the huge three that gave you guys the three-point lead. As a shooter, just how do you stay in that mindset when the ball comes to you after maybe what hasn't been your best shooting night to knock down maybe the biggest shot of the game? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's part of the the challenge and the fun of basketball is just trying to stay ready and aggressive. That's something I'm continuing to work on. But, you know, in that situation, you just have to shoot it. You know, it's a good, good look. You know, it was, you know, time was running down, like you said. Um, team needed a big shot and you just got to step up and deliver it. I want to ask about maybe then off the floor in your few years here. What's something you've really benefited from the Notre Dame experience that doesn't include basketball? I think just the vibe of campus, you know, the school spirit is tremendous. You know, the kids and faculty and honestly, the, even the, the greater South Bend area is just, you know, really rallied around Notre Dame, um, especially athletics, which is cool to be a part of. All, pretty much all the sports, you know, people just, you know, there's a care factor that you don't really find in many other places. And it's, it's a blessing as, to be, as an athlete to kind of benefit from that and get to experience that, but just kind of getting the vibe of campus and, and you know, having that level of like almost like a family is is pretty neat. I want to talk about the community a little bit more as we shift back to basketball. When you guys look at your record this year, you're 6-0 at home. You've won every game. You've played at Purcell Pavilion, knocked off Kentucky, knocked off Carolina. What's been the key to your guys' success when playing at home? Uh, you know, home is, is you got to protect your home court. And that's just as simple as that, you know, especially if you want to do the things that we want to do and, you know, be a top team in the ACC, be a tournament team, which we know we are. Um, you know, you got to protect your home court. And so rallying around the fans, obviously the Kentucky game was amazing, you know, with, with the, the packed crowd and the storming of the court and everything. But even, you know, last night, like we're, we're, we're over break, but still a good crowd and, and just kind of bringing that energy and feeling comfortable at home is important. And so we're playing well and uh, you just got to take it one game at a time. Cormac, appreciate the time. Thanks. Thank you. When we come back, we'll look ahead at next week's games on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. It's time now to wrap up this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. Coach, you guys have won four in a row, five of your last six. You're now above 500 in the ACC, and the schedule is in a really good spot now. Some really competitive, but games you can get on, on the road and at home. What's your mindset now going into this stretch? Well, to be greedy, you know, and, and uh, you know, I'd like to take the same demeanor we took on the road to Atlanta that we did to Pittsburgh, you know, and uh, uh, we're going to see some zone defense down there. It's a tough place to play. We've only maybe won once or twice down there in our in our in our short time in this ACC. But uh, you know, let's be confident and go for it like we've been doing. Coach, as always, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Tim. That does it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireRack.com.